Today, we're going to unlock a math trick that honestly feels like a superpower. We're talking about how to estimate the square root of any number in just a few seconds, all without reaching for a calculator. So, to get started, just a quick warm-up question for you. What's the square root of 81? Yeah, you probably didn't even need a second for that one. Of course, it's 9. Super simple, right? See? You've already got the basics down. Okay, but what if I asked you for the square root of 87? All of a sudden, it's not quite so straightforward. You know it's got to be a little more than 9, but how much more, exactly? That's where things get a little bit tricky. But don't you worry, because there is an awesome, simple trick that can make this problem almost as easy as that first one. All right, let's break it down. Here is your step-by-step -step guide to this ridiculously fast method. It really just comes down to three simple steps. Let's use our number 87. Okay, step one, find the closest perfect square that's below 87. Well, that's 81, and its root is 9. So right away, we know our answer is going to start with 9. Now, step two, you find the difference between our number and that square. So 87 minus 81 is 6. That number, 6, is going to be the top of our fraction. And finally, step three, just take the root from step one, which was 9, and double it. That gives us 18, and that's the bottom of our fraction. So here is how it all comes together. We take our starting number, 9, and we just add that fraction we made, 6 over 18. Now, that fraction simplifies down to 1 third, which you know is about 0.33. And just like that, our final estimate is 9.33. Now, check this out. Compare that to the actual value, which is 9.327 and a bunch of other numbers. Our estimate is super duper close, and we figured it out in seconds. How amazing was that? You know, the best way to really make a new skill stick is to practice. So let's just run through a couple more examples together to really build up your confidence. Okay, next up, what is the square root of 39? Just think about that first step. What's the closest perfect square that's below it? You got it, it's 36, and the root of that is 6. So our answer starts with 6. Next, we find the difference, 39 minus 36, which is 3. That's our numerator. Then we double the root, 6, to get 12 for our denominator. So we're left with 6 plus 3 over 12. And 3 twelfth. Well, that's just a quarter, or 0.25. So our estimate is 6.25. And would you look at that? The actual value is 6.245, once again, we've got a lightning fast and seriously accurate result. We are on fire. Let's do one more, even faster this time. The square root of 27. Okay, closest square is 25, so the root starts with five. The difference is two, and double the root is 10. So that's five plus two over 10, which gives us 5.2. And the actual value? 5.196, I mean, come on. The point is, this method consistently gets us an amazing approximation in basically no time at all. Now, this method is absolutely fantastic, but there is one little detail you need to know about. Let's look at a case where the trick needs just a little tweak to keep it super accurate. So what do you think happens if we try this with a small number that's pretty far from a perfect square, like, say, the number 2? The closest square below it is 1. Let's see how our formula holds up here. So using our method, we get 1 plus the difference, which is 2 minus 1, over double the root, which is 2 times 1. That gives us 1.5. But the actual value is about 1.414. So this time, our estimate is good, but it's not as razor sharp as before. And the reason is that our starting number, 2, is pretty far away from its nearest perfect square, which was 1. But, and this is so cool, there's a powerful fix. You just repeat the process using your first answer as the new starting point. It's like you're refining your guess. If we run the formula again, but with 1.5, we get a new answer of 1.417, which is so much closer to the true value. You can actually keep doing this to get as accurate as you could ever want. Now, you might be thinking this is just some clever modern math hack, but the truth is actually way more interesting. This method has an absolutely incredible history. Believe it or not, this method goes back almost 4,000 years to the ancient Babylonians. Then it was rediscovered in the 17th century by none other than Sir Isaac Newton, who generalized it into a more powerful formula we now call the newton raphson method. So this trick we're using is actually a simplified piece of legendary mathematics. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? 
This quote shows that even one of the greatest scientific minds ever, who helped formalize this very method, still approached discovery with this sense of wonder and play, kind of like we are with this trick today. Okay, so after that journey through calculation and a little bit of history, let's wrap everything up with the key takeaway. You officially have a new math superpower. So let's just go over it one last time. First, find the perfect square just below your number. The root of that square is the whole number part of your answer. Then, all you do is add a fraction. The difference between your number and that square goes on top, and twice the root goes on the bottom. And that is it. You've got your estimate. So, you've learned a tool that's not just practical, but it's also deeply connected to the history of human thought. And the question I want to leave you with is this. Now that you can estimate square roots like a 17th century genius, what other math tricks that we use all the time are actually just clever history in disguise?